Shalom. Shalom Aleinu. We all call Yisrael. Yahase Shalom. Yahase Shalom. Shalom Aleinu. We all call Yisrael. Yahase Shalom. Yahase Shalom. Shalom Aleinu, we all call Yisrael. May he who makes peace in the highest heavens make peace for us, for all Israel and the whole entire world, and let us say, Amen. We find ourselves, we just finished the very holy festival of Shavuos. Many people know it by the name Pentecost. This is the day when the Jewish tradition tells us is the birthday of our faith. We received the Ten Commandments and the, the whole Torah at Mount Sinai. God spoke in front of millions of people. And we discussed it before last week. Now, we read now in this week's Torah reading, you know, I'll just say quickly though, you know, some of the Hasidic masters, they point out it's something in Yiddish. It says, you know, like the Shabbos Nach Yantiv is Nach Yantiv, that the the Sabbath, or even the whole week, after the holiday, it's, it's still the holiday. The word nach, which means after, also means still, continues. And so the, pa so the, pa so the, so, so, so anyway, like we were saying, so what I was saying is that the, that the days when it's after the holiday, it's still, the, the spirit of the holiday is still with us. Now we're in this t time, what's the whole holiday about? It's about the Torah. It's about receiving the Torah. Now, and so, when we continue to read the Torah, and what we read in the synagogue this week is very fascinating. It's the longest Torah okay. reading, single Torah reading. In, so, the, so this reading that we read this Saturday in the synagogue is the longest single reading of, of all. It's very interesting how many, it's, it's 176 verses, and it's very interesting because the longest psalm is Psalm 119, is also 176 verses, and also the longest book of the Talmud um, is numbered at 176 pages, Baba Matsya, Baba Bas, Baba Basra rather, uh, which uh, is also it's actually 175 folios, but we uh, we start because we start with page two. Now, um, but it's still that same number, 176. Now, back to the ideas that we have in this week's Torah reading. Actually, one thing we just said in our liturgy, the priestly blessing, may the Lord bless you and keep you, that comes from our Torah reading. And that comes right after the laws of the uh, Nazarite, and, right, and, which and the laws of the Nazarite come right after the laws of the Sota. Now, these are, I'll explain these terms. You know, we talk about what comes before and what comes after. The senior rabbi in the congregation where I, where I worship and where I'm an associate rabbi, he, he talks about how the previous congregation where he served, they had an installation, a haftorah, for him, a, a big celebration. And, and when he got up to speak, he said that uh, he, uh, he, the, it was, uh, first there came, the, there was a sheriff, and, uh, and then there was a judge, and then there was the rabbi spoken. And when he got up to speak, he said, this is very good, because now, I'm after the, I'm after the judge and I'm after the sheriff. It could have been a different order of how we had it, that we could have had the, uh, I could have been, if I would have spoke first, and then the judge and then the sheriff, then I would have been before the judge and the sheriff would have been after both of us. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so like I was talking about how the order of the things in this week's reading in, in the book of Numbers in the Bible. So first you have the laws of the sota. What does it mean, a sota? <laughs> sota means a woman who is suspected of adultery. Her husband warned her, I don't want you to be alone with this guy. She's alone with him. They don't know if they did anything. There was no witnesses. They would take her to the temple and they would write a, uh, on a scroll, on a piece of parchment, they would write these Bible verses put it in water, erase, make the ink go into the water, and she would have to drink these bitter waters. Now if she was, if she did commit adultery, she would die. It was a miracle that happened. And if she, and if she didn't commit adultery, then she would be blessed 
that she would have a son because yeah, because she went through the whole ordeal. <laughs> then right, a married woman. So then the next the next uh, the next uh, part of in Numbers talks about the Nazarite. A Nazarite is someone like Samson. It has a vow, although Samson was different than other Nazarites. But the, a Nazarite is someone who takes a vow not to drink wine, not to cut his hair, and not to visit a cemetery. He could do it maybe for 30 days, or he could do it for his whole life as long as he wants. But at least 30 days, he might take this oath. And then when, he, and then when he's done with this, he has to go bring certain sacrifices and so forth. So the sages ask, why are these, why are these, two, why are these two portions right next to each other, these two chapters? So the, the sages answer, the Talmud answers, that's Misha Rok Kulkuloso Shel Sota. Whoever sees the Sota be Kukuloso, whoever sees the Sota, the woman accused of idolatry in her shame and her embarrassment, her state of embarrassment that she has to go through because it was a whole ordeal that she had to go through. The Talmud explains what she had to go through mm. if she was accused of, of adultery. And then, and then he Yazarus Atzmam in Yayin, he's going to accept himself not to drink wine, because he could see the damage that alcohol can do, can cause sin. Although alcohol can also be used for spirituality, but it can also lead to sin. And so he can choose to a abstain from wine because of seeing the sin. Now this reminds me, a lot of folks ask. We see in our society these days, um, some people are becoming less religious, and some people are becoming more religious, meaning people who are raised in a certain level of religious level yeah. are going more to the right in their religious observance. And so why is that? And a lot of people are upset. They said, oh, it's insulting to the previous generations. Yeah. Why, why can't you be like your parents? Why do you have to be more religious than them? The answer, I think it's held into a certain... Uh, uh, I remember a friend of mine, when I was in, in the seminary in, in Jerusalem, he told me about how he, he was raised in, in, in a home where they did not watch television. But his parents were raised in a home where they did watch television. He was considered in, it was considered to be more religious that they did not watch television. So he asked his parents, Mom and Dad, what's wrong? You guys grew up watching TV. Why can't I watch TV? And so their answer was, if it was the if it was the the Lone Ranger and Leave It to Beaver on TV, I'd let you watch it. But the garbage that's on these days, I'm not letting you watch. And so that wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. And so the answer is is that since the society has become more, although nowadays you can get you know on YouTube and Netflix and you can watch the Lone Ranger and Leave It to Beaver and and you can and you can relax. You know you don't have to watch the garbage that's on. But anyway. So that's so that's the message that that, that he wanted. So that's the meaning of that since the society became more corrupt. So then the answer is to go more to the right, and by doing that, I think then we go to the priestly blessing that we receive the blessings that was promised, and uh, we can attach that also to Shavuos. Um, but we, we're going to have to talk about that another time. I have a very interesting message. A lot of you folks were at the spirituality group this morning where we discuss this, this very interesting teaching from the Kalavar Rebbe, he should be well, about avoiding anger. Thank you very much for joining and God bless you.